philosophy of nothing in plain sight Something so familiar, so foreign Forget to remember to forget The same art, just a different medium A moving canvas, a picture of myself We like things little, but we love things big Yeah, I grew up Ben Page here, saying hello from beautiful, sunny Los Angeles. It's Elisa Spangler Miller. I'm from cohort 13. I'm Linda Lombardo. And hello from warm Southern California. Welcome to my zit spot. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rana. I'm a guide with the Association of Nature Forest Therapy Guides and Programs, ANFT for short. I'm Alex. We're in Barcelona. This is it. This is it. I found my purpose. Every time I turned around, I had a friend saying to me, have you heard of this thing called forest therapy or forest bathing? And my first impression was, I want to do that. And then I asked her what it was. When I, about five years ago, when I heard about Shinrin-yoku forest bathing in Japan, I was really excited that there was a process just for the general public that would help them do this. I was doing this program in the Inyo Mountains called the Nature of Council, and there was this guy, Amos Clifford, there. <laughs> I want to show you something. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, cool. So he said, okay, I want, I want to invite you to close your eyes. So I closed my eyes and he took me by the shoulders and led me up to this enormous redwood tree. And he got my nose, you know, like this far away from it. He said, okay, now open your eyes. And it was really kind of a bizarre experience because I felt like maybe I had never seen a tree before. <laughs> I had an immediate curiosity and immediate awakening of this deep resonance of something that used to live in me as a child, you know, I'll call it my sense of wonder or my sense of connection. And I knew it was something that I had to explore. Nos dejamos ser nosotros mismos, fuera de límites o barreras impuestas culturalmente, ¿no? I have to say, I was really impressed with the training. I was really impressed with um, what we call the standard sequence and the protocols that the ANFT is teaching to guides as a way to help people develop nature connection. I, I was impressed with the practicum and the mentors that are, uh, um, everyone gets a mentor when you go through this process. And I just thought it was brilliant. I thought it was really well thought out. The eight-day intensive was incredible. This is something that I had been doing, practicing on my own, or I thought I had, but I got so much more. There are ways that you can replicate. There are methods that you can utilize to replicate this experience of dropping into a liminal space. And I gained so much confidence in leading a group and got so much joy out of being led. I've always spent a lot of time outside and a lot of time in the woods and in the desert, but that week attuned me to so many things that I didn't even really understand were deep inside me. I think the biggest takeaway for me was um, heightening all of my senses, but in particular my sense of smell. I feel like I'm being the fox or I'm being the coyote and I'm really smelling what's going on around me and understanding that scent trails have really specific paths. There was something in the synchronicity of the forest is the therapist, the guide opens the doors 
And that moment in time where not knowing what else to write, I wrote, I open doors to possibility. I held that as my mantra during that first week of the intensive. Just being in a group of people where everyone really wants to learn how to be, as opposed to learning how to figure out the answers. As a guide, I am I'm struck often taking people out just how amazing and different this experience is by noticing what is around you. By listening. I think becoming a guide and going through the whole process has made me feel, quite frankly, kind of powerful in the forest. It's made me feel like I can really own what I'm doing when I'm out there with other people. I'm part of this burgeoning movement here in the United States. I feel like a bit of a pioneer. Being a guide is just such an incredible service to not only myself, because as a guide, I get so much out of these walks, but I'm also able to, to recognize that the passion and what I get from the forest is something that I can help other people open up to. You know, the forest really gives to you what you are needing. My motivation of being a forest therapy guide is that I can spread the love from all these beings in the forest to promote healing for both the humans and the more than human world. What's it like to be a guide? Well, I love it. <laughs> I think it's my favorite job I've ever had. In a way, I think it's what I was destined to do. I was telling a friend about what I do, a friend that I grew up with, and he said, wait a second, so you're getting paid to do what we did as kids like all the time? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Just as we gave thanks for the birds, and as it goes, it talks about the eagle as being the leader of the birds. An eagle flies just, just over our heads. You know, just, just there. It's as if the eagle was called in by our giving thanks for it. And I think magic things like that happen all the time. It's just that we have to relax and sink in to be a part of the landscape in order to see them. So I got dressed and I ran outside and I plopped myself down. I remember it, I just plopped down and the snow was falling and touching my face and melting. And then I had that aha moment I, and I started to cry and I remember it so vividly. You're, you're an individual, you're unique. Love yourself. Be who you are. And I remember him saying to the woman who was sitting next to him, I just realized that God is here. Now, I, I'm a very spiritual person. I'm not a religious person. And yet that just blew me away. I, I actually had to get up and walk away because I started to cry. I felt so moved that he had this realization in his own way. Even though we're all walking together, we're on our own walks. Now I'm really just focused on being alive and appreciating the sensation of being alive without having to get all up in my head about what does it all mean, you know? Now it's just simple. I can just love the sensation of being here. It's a very simple practice, but the effects are profound. I realized how much I've missed along the way throughout my life going so fast and there are places that I wish now that I could revisit across the globe at the pace that I've become more accustomed to 
because I hear more, I see more, I feel more, I smell more, sometimes I taste more. This is a very sacred activism for me. I believe that when people reconnect with nature, with the forest, it becomes personal. And when something becomes personal, we want to protect it. We want to save it. We want to make sure it's here, not only for us, but for the seven generations that are to come. With all of our technology, which is taking us further and further from being in the moment, we need this more than we ever have. We can't make change if we feel disconnected, if we feel it doesn't matter, if, if we don't realize the effect we're having on our environment, how are we going to want to make change? This practice, could heal our brokenness.